Hello and welcome to Excel-Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-Templates.com so you're sure to get the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques. You can also get a step-by-step -step tutorial of the video that I'm going to show right now as well as the sample download file. All right, uh, today I'm going to show you a uh, user request. They had sent a uh, ballroom occupancy chart. So you can see they've got a whole bunch of different ballrooms uh, and uh, they've got different names on those ballrooms and what they've done is you can see they've put a uh, value of a picture of one half of a triangle when it's p.m. one half of a triangle when it's a.m. Uh, and it's orange and brown uh, so this is a p.m. one this is a a.m. one and then anytime it was blue it was a whole day one well uh, what the user found is they couldn't count these shapes they can see visually uh, where each room is booked you can see Cinelog Ballroom 2 is not booked at all um, but you can't count shapes within Excel so you needed to find a different way to do that they wanted to count how do I know how many a.m. p.m. ones I have then they have some special information here like an X means it's less than four hours in the day if there was a two there it would mean that it is uh, part of a multi-day conference that is being held in this ballroom so I'm going to show you how I went about creating this chart um, so here is the final chart that I've got and what I've done is I've made it a little bit smarter and used Excel's uh, uh, conditional formatting as well as some uh, formulas some date formulas so notice here we've got July 1 through 31 well each month has different days so if you come in here and you type in oh let's say September 9 1 of 2013 you can see over here on the right uh, my template hides or does not show the 31 because the 31 is not a valid value let's go to 1 uh, 2016 you can see uh, February 29th is a leap year so it knows when it's leap year and it hides um, the other two uh, 30 and 31 so let's do 2 1 of 2014 you can see next year is not a leap year there's only 28 days but um, instead of 29 and then what I've also done is we've gone in here and if you come in and uh, notice that the weekends were changing the user has a three-day weekend is what they consider the weekend so uh, as you can see as we change this to say September or let's do October now since we're in October 2013 notice the weekend highlighting changes and then also with conditional formatting if you type an A in any one of these cells you can see we are booking up the conference room for any uh, AM activity and if you type in a P in the PM section it's gonna block it out for the PM likewise since we're uh, using values here um, we can notice these ones are blocked out for the whole day so if we put a W in there for the whole day uh, it will block it out for the entire day now each one of these values are now being counted over here on the right total AM total PM total one day so the user doesn't have to go copy and paste each one of those shapes uh, they can just simply come in and type in their values uh, and they can also do some other ones like the X for less than four hours and the two um, if it's a multi-day event so let me show you how I went about building this chart so that uh, it saves this user some time alright so I've set up our ballrooms here and we've got uh, one row for AM one row for PM and then in between each of those rows we have our informational area now we want to designate cell A1 to be our date when we change this date it is going to change the number of days that we have here as well as the weekend highlighting that you'll see all right first we need to create our formula to find out uh, uh, we know number one is always the first date of the month but uh, we're going to create a formula and just copy this all the way across so that when we change this date these will fill in the number of days that are in each month for us all right so we're going to start this off with a um, equals if statement equals let's try equals if and we are going to go and do a count so what we want to do is we want to look one cell to the left and count um, and we're going to do B2 I'm going to lock that down uh, and we're going to do that through B2 we're going to say if the count of that is greater than zero uh, then we know we're in the middle of our date range um, and let's go ahead and, and take a look at our next date function uh, if it's not all of that 
it's ultimately going to say it's the very, very first date that we have, and we'll just enter a 1. So that's going to be the last thing that we do in the formula. Um, all right, so if the value is true, that means that we are in the middle of our month area. We're not at the very, very first date. Um, we are, what we want to do here is we want to type in another if statement. And then if in this if statement, we know that every single month has at least 28 days. So if B2 is less than 28, then we know we're in that middle of the month, and we can just add one to B2. So let's go ahead and do B2 plus 1. Now, if we're, um, uh, we've gotten past the first day, uh, but we're somewhere after or at 28, this is where we need to do some other error checking here to see if we're at the end of where we are. Um, and so what we want to do is, uh, if we're at day 30 and it happens to be February, well, the value to our left is going to be blank. So um, we need to check for that. So let's look and do another if statement and say if the length of B2, which is one cell to our left, is equal to 0, um, then we know we're uh, at the end of our uh, rope, if you will, so it's like, say, February 30th, and there is no February 30th, so we just want to enter a blank. Now, if uh, the length of the cell to our left is not zero, this is where we want to go and check and see if we have reached um, the end of the month, or if we are uh, somewhere between day 28, 29, or 30, or 31. So what we want to do is we want to say, if B2, which is our cell to the left, if we add one to that, Let's check and see if that is greater than the end of the month. So, for instance, July has 31 days. So what we want to do is we want to create a date here by using the day function. Um, and within that, we want to do a date. And so you can see the first argument of date is year. So we're going to use the year of A1. And I'm going to hit F4 to lock that down. Uh, and we're going to use the same month as well of A1 and hit F4 to lock that down. However, we're going to add 1 to this month. So since our date in A1 is July, we're going to add 1 and make it August, and we're going to make it August 1st. Then within that, we're going to go ahead and subtract 1. Now when we subtract 1, that's going to go from August 1st back to July 31st. And then we can compare and see if our cell to the left plus 1 is greater than that. Then we know we shouldn't go on any further. So because of that, um, what we want to do is just do blanks there. So we'll do double quotes. If we are not um, greater than the number of days that we have in the month, we want to do B2, which is our cell to the left, plus 1. All right, so we need to end uh, with a few more parentheses in there to kind of back out of all these if statements. And once again, I said if we, uh, uh, if none of all of this is true, it's our actually our very, very first date um, in the series, and that's the first day, which is a number one. Let's go ahead and hit enter, and you see we have the number one there because it's our first date. And if you go through and you don't know how this works, go up to your formula bar ribbon. And then in the formula ribbon, you have evaluate formula. And it will step you through every single piece of this so that you can see why it comes up with 1. And as we copy this across all the way to AG, you can see now that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 31. Steve, I could have just done that with a 1 plus 1 to the left. But let's go ahead and do February of 2013. And look at this. It ends at February 28th. The 29th, 30th, and 31st are just showing as blanks because they are not uh, valid for February of 2013. If you do February 1st of 2016, you notice that is a leap year, and AE has a 29th in there. So uh, you can't go wrong using those formulas. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to October 1st of 2013. Fills in 31 days. Now, right above this, I'm going to put up above, this is how I'm going to create my weekends information. I want to know, is October 1st a weekend or not? So uh, there's a formula called weekday. We're going to use weekday and find out if this is an actual Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Um, we got to kind of uh, uh, work backwards into this. Let's do an equals if. And then up here, we want to hit, oops. Let's undo that. Let's start again. Um, equals if. Hit my tab button. So if um, is number, so if C2 
here is a number um, because once we get to the end of like February if it's not a number it's going to be blanks so we first want to check and see if it is a number we want to do the weekday function and the weekday needs a serial number and a return type so um, our serial number we need to create by doing that date function once again where we need to get the year as you can see it's kind of helping you out here we need the year of A1 and I'm going to hit F4 and end my parentheses we need the month of A1 and I'm going to hit F4 to lock that in uh, and then um, we need the day and the day is right below it's right here in C2 so this is October 1st and we can end that parentheses and then here's the return type of weekday I always choose number one I like Sunday to be the one and seven to be Saturday you can choose all these different variations but let's lock it down and say the number one is a Sunday number two is a Monday so forth, so on and so forth until we ultimately get uh, to the end of the week which is seven so and a Saturday now if it's not a number we're just going to show a blank I'm going to hit enter and you can see October 1st is a number 3, and a number 3 means um, Sunday was 1, Monday was uh, would be a 2, so this is a Tuesday, I'm going to guess. So now we have um, the dates here. We can actually see if this is a weekend or not. Um, so once again, we said 1 was a Sunday and 7 was a Saturday. All right, so now that we have um, our days, we know if they are a weekend. Six and seven are Saturday and Sunday. Um, now, in this hotel occupancy chart, uh, they wanted to also show Friday as part of the weekend as well. So we want to highlight something like this in a light blue format. So what I want to do is I want to highlight my range of rows and columns that I'm going to create the conditional formatting on. I want to go up to my home ribbon. Then I want to go to my conditional formatting button and I want to do a new rule. Now we want to choose this last one, use a formula to determine which cells to format. We want to change our format here and we want to choose a fill color of, let's do the second blue right there, click OK. Now we want to create a formula here that checks to see if it is true. So what we want to do is do an equals and we're going to do an OR statement. So we're going to say if C uh, and we're going to do a dollar sign one, and I'll tell you about that in a second. If C1 is equal to a 6, or if C dollar sign 1 is equal to a 7, or if C dollar sign 1 is equal to 1. All right, so what this is saying is um, in that first row, so that's why I've locked it down. I don't want this to move. I want it to always be the first row, so that's why I have dollar sign 1 uh, starting in C. I want that to move and be relative across all of the range. If that's equal to a Friday, which is a 6, a Saturday, which is a 7, or a Sunday, which is 1. Let's go ahead and apply that conditional formatting. And look at that. See the 6, 7, and 1 here? They are now highlighted. Um, if I change this from October to September, uh, or let's go November 11 slash 1. Notice that my weekends shift so that it can just be done with this date as we want to put it in. Uh, 2013. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and hide this first row of data. And you just want to highlight it, then go up to your font selection, and let's change it to white. Uh, they're still there. You can see them, but they're just not going to show up and be visible to the human eye. All right, we're pretty close. All we need to do is a couple of things. Um, we want that any time they enter an A in that cell, or a P in this cell, um, or a W in these cells, uh, to show AM with a yellow, a PM in a brown, and a W for whole day uh, as a dark blue. Um, so how we go about doing that is we want to highlight that data range again that we had highlighted a second ago for our conditional formatting, and let's do some more conditional formatting. Let's go up to the home, do conditional formatting here, and we want to do new rule once again. Use formula to determine which cells. Let's change our formula and let's do this as a yellow color here. Make it really stark. Now I also want to change my font color because I don't want to show uh, those AMs, PMs um, in my uh, uh, data. I just want to show the color. So click on OK. And what we want to do here is we want to type in the. F All right, for our formula, what we want to do is we want to do equals count if 
and we want to do in cell C3 and we want this to move all over the place so we're just going to leave it as a relative reference and what we want to count is we want to count an A for AM um, however uh, just in case an A is anywhere in the string like let's say they type in AM I'm going to do an A star and end that in the quotes in my parentheses and click on OK. So now if you see if I go in here and I type in an A, look at that, it's going to highlight it in yellow, do an A again, it highlights it in yellow. Um, now we want to repeat this step. Um, you can see the A's are in there, uh, but they're just not showing up because we have the font as yellow in our conditional formatting as well. We're going to repeat the same step and do more conditional formatting rules. Um, doing uh, very similar types of action instead of A we want to do P for PM um, and in this case we want to fill uh, it more of let's say a brown color and a font of that same uh, brown color and click on OK and we have the P instead of the A for PM click on OK and if we come in here and hit the P uh, you will see that that gets highlighted in there as well. Oops, looks like I didn't choose the right font color, so it's not quite hidden. Uh, but you just uh, go ahead and choose the right font color. Let's do the last conditional formatting rule that we wanted to do, and that is for the whole days. Um, we wanted to do a fill color of a darker blue. We'll choose this middle one here, uh, and the font color of that same middle blue. Click on OK. And then as we come in and do a whole day, you will see the whole day is going to be blocked out there as well. Final thing we want to do is over on the right-hand side to meet their criteria is we wanted to do a count if. So this is so that they don't have to manually count their, form, their uh, half days and full days anymore. Um, we're just going to do a very simple count if. So it's count if formula. We're going to do the range of C3 to AG3, and we're going to count looking for that A with a star, which is a wild card. Once you do that, you'll see if we come over here and say here's another AM, the total goes to three. If I do one more, total goes to four. Really is going to help out this user a lot that they don't have to manually count all those things. Uh, and you can download this complete file, the sample Excel hotel ballroom occupancy chart template from excel-dashboardtemplates.com. Also, don't forget to sign up for my video channel so that you're sure to get the latest posts delivered directly to your inbox.